Il passe au ouais Super bel artiste Super oh, Encore un but sensationnel Another episode of the Uniformed Handball Hour is here, and we're right into it now. The World Championship has most definitely started, and we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot of people to talk to, but we're going to try to keep it keep it snappy. And Chris has, has a lovely little bit of introduction here because, as you know from our last podcast, we started the Patreon project that we're doing at the moment. And Chris has a special shout out for some special members of that Patreon. Yeah, well, first of all, really delighted with the response. Uh, much better than we, I think, ever could have dreamed of. So thank you, uh, particularly all those of you who we didn't know were really out there, that the silent supporters uh, who are not going to be so silent anymore, particularly the Nine Meter Club people because we promised to name all of the Nine Meter Club members. So here they are, in alphabetical order. Alban Falk Hansen, Carson Sumfelda, Giza van den Wildenberg, <laughs> Jan Willem Kommer, Jimmy Grandin, Kyle Bullen, Merle Schack, Ola Bola, Paul Theodor Egg Lillevet, uh, Saver Balde Ludvigsen, Tobias Dandorp, No Name, Adam Hauser, Anders Stapp Nielsen, Attila Molnar, and a few of those are even in the six meter club. So thank you to those people. Uh, <laughs> I went too far. But, <laughs> <laughs> but th- there's only one man in the world who could list out an, a list of names from all over the world just that easily. And that is Chris O'Reilly after your appearance on ESPN. Uh, funny thing is every single game I'm commentating and uh, the Paul Bray's commentating is going to be an ESPN, but none of them until today, were USA matches. And holy shit, I'm glad I was here for this USA game. (laughs) The great thing is, Alex, I think you've seen the match, right? Brian hasn't. Brian was having a normal life this evening so far uh, until he decided to podcast with us on a Friday evening. We will definitely talk about that USA victory, um, but we'll also kind of cover all of the best games in the first round we've now seen every team play so we can get our first impressions and we have a special guest joining us on the podcast and that is Tomasz Gembala from the Polish national team the big two meter 12 defensive specialist and sometimes random rocket uh, came and uh, talked to me and Brian and we'll bring you that interview this podcast is primarily going to go to the Patreon listeners so the first part will still be free you will be able to listen to that wonderful interview we we had with Tomash. the reactions to the big games in the first round will all be under the patreon banner okay We, we also have a bonus interview in connection to the usa match because i thought after that game i couldn't not run down to the mix zone and uh have a few words with a player Alex, who you and I have played against on a few occasions, have been in very physical battles with, and uh, fantastic to see him thrive at a world level. So shall we go into the interview with Tomasz first, and then we uh, will react to everything we've seen on these opening days? Yes, absolutely. Let's do that. I mean, of course, uh, Poland had their opening match against France. They lost 26-24. But I think a lot of people online, and especially me, I watched it as well, were very impressed with the Polish team. Still feels like it's a Polish team in some type of transition, but I think they could still cause an upset or two in this tournament just yet. So let's listen to what me and Alex talked about with Tomasz a bit earlier today. Welcome to the show, uh, Tomasz. And before we continue with the interview, the our specialist in names chris o'reilly is not joining us for this uh chat so uh can you just quickly tell us how to pronounce your full name tomas genbala genbala yeah chris warned us about the yeah, the little bit in the middle Polish language yeah yeah it's genbala yeah it's <laughs> not easy. genbala it's genbala genbala okay so, so that's pretty good yeah well jean dobre and uh dobre. that's nice that's really nice yeah, yeah so much. Um, so Wednesday evening was obviously a massive occasion for all of you. We're playing in Katowice in front of a, a, a pretty full or, or sold out Katowice Arena. 
What first of all, what was it like just stepping into that arena uh, to play France, emotions wise? You just need to know that uh, the Spodek Arena, that uh, where we played, it's like a mecca for uh, the all indoor sports in Poland. It's uh, it's the it's the best, uh, maybe not the biggest arena or the newest arena for us, but uh, it's really it's like an honor to play in this arena with uh, this sign on your chest. It's really it's something that uh, I think uh, something that every Polish athlete want to achieve to play in this arena. So to play in a front of almost full spot deck against the Olympic champion with such an atmosphere, it was really like a, maybe not dream came true, but one of these big steps, big uh, milestones you want to achieve in your sport life. It's it's always great uh, when Poland hosts one of these championships. You know, you you can really get the the passion that the Polish people feel for the sport. But in recent times, I think. In Poland, the the focus on handball has uh, shifted a little bit, or there hasn't been as much attention to the sport and uh, in the country. Do you feel like hosting this World Championship will be able to kind of vault the sport back where it needs to be in Poland? Just you know, it's only one World Championship. In one, it's one tournament. It will be allowed for one month in Poland. Okay, it's uh, good. Uh, if we make a great success, great, uh, uh, great results, then yeah, it will make uh, it's louder. It will make handball more known in Poland. But the most important is to build the structure from the down, down to upstairs, not only from the upstairs, not from the first national team, but from the all the small clubs that are in the in our nation, and that must be important. I hope that this tournament will give the spark to build, to create new small clubs that can bring another people, another kids into the sport. And talk to us a little bit about the game um, itself, itself against France. I mean, France, they don't lose many of these opening games at World Championships. I think there was a, a tweet out, I think Rasmus Boysen put a tweet out about, I think it was the 90s since they last lost an opening game at a World Championship. So it's not something to do often. But now that you're able to reflect on it after a few, few nights sleep, how do you think you did in the game itself and, and how was it on the court playing against France for you personally? For me, it was the game that we could win. We could get this. Uh, France was, uh, for us, it was in our reach. We could win this game. We didn't manage to do this. Yeah, they they are the experts. They they used the better, our bad moments uh, to the maximum and they it was really hard to get uh, over them. We could get to the draw, we could get to one goal behind, but it was really hard to get one goal ahead of them. And the, in these crucial moments, they were really, they were really good and they were really consistent in this moment, in this uh, area. Uh, yes, we we came to this game like, yeah, we play we play at home. Nobody at home can uh, beat us and can uh, get to our heart. We must. Uh, we must. We have to. Not only must. We have to show our heart. We have to show our emotion to our fans, and we have to show that we want more than any other team because we are at home. And if we don't show that, the fans will not come with us. The important thing about Polish sport fans is you need to show. You need to prove that you have this heart of a warrior. If you are not a warrior. They will not come after you, but if you are, you, if you show them that you have this heart, they will come with you everywhere to the hell and back. Yeah, and I, it did really look like it that the fans, no, no matter what, were behind you, and it, you really gained from it. So it's definitely something that is going to be a big factor. But you know, one big kind of news before the tournament was that uh, Kamil Shipchak, uh, one, one of your star players, uh, picked up an injury and would miss it. Um, did you have to kind of change some game plans to accommodate for that? Of course, him being a, a, a top player. Yeah, for sure. Kamil is a great offensive player and what he does on the offensive side of the floor, it's uh, really amazing. And he showed that uh, he is showing that for a few years right now. But uh, we had a lot of time to prepare for that. I think the whole uh, we knew before the uh, whole preparation time period. So when we had this uh, period, we could prepare that we uh, prepare to the game that we knew he will not participate participate in so yeah we had to change a little bit but uh, we have good pivots our pivots are really good and uh, 
it was just a little bit maybe we had two one two plays for uh, Camille, especially for Camille, and we just don't play them. The rest is the same. You talk about the Polish fans giving you a boost as as a, as a squad, and I think. A lot of people, or a lot of neutrals especially, were very impressed with how Poland played on the first day against France. And it's, it seems like there's still a lot, you still have a lot to give. So what would your then expectations be for this team? Your personal expectations? Where, how far do you think you could go with this, with this team? The feeling is, the feeling is one, one thing and the expectations for us is the other thing. Everybody knows when you have the, uh, such, such a tournament in your home country, it's the tournament where a tournament where you need to give the results. You don't go to play nice. You don't go to okay, we played good, we fought well, we have amazing atmosphere, but we lost. No, it's not the nice part of the handball. This show is not important for us right now. The important is the result. And we all speak about staying on the Olympic uh, path. We want to go to the games, to the Olympic Games, we want to go to the Paris. So yeah. The best option, the best way for that is to get to the quarterfinal. And if we get there, everything can happen because we play at home. We play in, uh, if we go to the quarterfinal, we play in amazing Dynk Arena, in Ergo Arena. So it will be really, it can, there can happen everything. But uh, to this point, we need to win five another games right now. And on the way, it's Spain. So we need to show that we can play handball too. Can you describe your role in this squad? Of course, you are the defensive rock, uh, but how do you kind of build the team around you in defense? I think also in the club and in the national team, when the coaches start to plan the defense, they say, okay, you need to be there. You need to be there as long as you can. Also in the club, in Kielce or in the national team, it's important for us that I'm a... Uh, 60 minutes on the floor in the defense and I can uh, just build this uh, build this uh, monolith this what we built with my brother and with other players uh, that I'm there because on the offensive side uh, Shimon Shishko he's amazing and if he plays like that I can go to the back to the defense but in the moments when we, we need that uh, we don't make any changes in the attack defense or something like that then I can play in attack too. I, my role in the offense is not that important for our team, but uh, yeah, I'm ready to provide and we prepare all the time that uh, I will play a little bit time, maybe 20, 15, 20 minutes in attack just to give a rest to Shimon or just to make this uh, our tactical plan better. And you mentioned your, your brother there and sharing a court with your brother. It's something we see, it's not that rare in handball, it may be rare in other sports. Um, but what is it like for you to share a court with your brother? I mean, I think probably the team feels like a, a load of brothers, but you have an actual brother there in the court, and it must be something special. Yeah, we <laughs> we have a lot of argue, we have a lot of arguments about how we play defense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have yeah, with Maciek playing with Maciek is really nice for me because we understand each other. Yeah, we have not a lot of time together, but uh, when we play together, when we have this flow. We understand each other without speaking, without words. We can. Uh, I just know how he will move. I just know how he will act. The arguments are about the ta- the mm, the tactical uh, side of the defense. What we want to do, what we want to achieve, where we want them to shoot, and from where they can score, and from where they cannot. That's the thing. What we what we are arguing about. But in this moment, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's the best option for me to play with him because we understand each other really good, even though we don't play too much together. And if there is an argument on the on the court, who has the final say about what's going to happen? If you ask me, I will say I have the final word. If you ask him, he will say that he has the final word. So I think it's some kind of maybe not democracy, some like meritocracy or plutocracy. Whoever's playing better gets the final say. <laughs> maybe it's like that. On who shouts louder. <laughs> and I suppose, lastly, I, I just want to ask, growing up with your family, how did how were you able to feed two giant men like you and your brother? How was your family able to feed a uh, two meter twelve and a two meter tall uh, growing boy? You need to know that we have two older brothers, yeah? 
<laughs> it's not only me and Magic, it's also Stanislav and Simon. <laughs> The, who's who's the tallest out of out of the four? I'm the tallest, but we have like circa eight meters in uh, in total. Oh my God, <laughs> I'd say Christmas dinner was something else. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty hard. They say yeah. that uh, for the Christmas dinner for the uh, for the soup we had swimming pool, not just one top. <laughs> <laughs> That's it from us. Th- thanks a lot for your time and good luck in the rest of the games. Thank you very much. So we have a few games under our belt now, and I think it's uh, fair to say that there have been a few, well, no, there's it's been some great matches, haven't there? I mean, we've had the USA getting their first ever result earlier today. We had the Iceland bringing half their country to uh, the World Championship and singing some of the most beautiful music I've ever heard at a, at an, at a handball event. Uh, we had the opening day as well with France. Didn't get the job done in the end when they when you felt like they could they needed to turn it up. They turned it up and they 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 uh, brush aside that that quite impressive Polish team. Uh, what else do we have, boys? Well, my first impression is that nobody seems really terrible at this championship yet, which is really nice. Uh, the first glimpse of that, and what I mean by that is we were kind of worried uh, about a few hammerings in this competition and there haven't been any 20 goal hammerings yet it's saudi arabia are a bit close but uh otherwise it's been fairly competitive the litmus test for me was uruguay uh, yesterday and, and the opening game uh for me commentating in gothenburg against cap verde hey. i was really like positively surprised by them because i tell you what Hearing about them, I spoke to a friend of ours, uh, Xavi Vegas, who uh, is working for the EHF at the moment. He was home in Catalonia for Christmas, and he saw one of their test matches. Their test matches were against third and fourth division Catalan teams, which are the kind of matches that we're used to playing when we played for Ireland and going to Catalonia for training camps. Um, So my hopes were not high (laughs) heading into the game. Uh, against the African silver medalists. But yeah, they, they played uh, with a great spirit. They played with intensity and speed and you know took a 3-1 lead. The deficiencies were there. All the signs of a, of a team kind of running out of steam were there. I know this because I tend to do the same things in these games, such as like trying to take standing shots from 10 meters out straight, straight into two defenders. <laughs> that happened. But uh, it, was a, it was quite an enjoyable game good crowds at all the games i've seen so far as well i haven't seen many from the poland side of course the the poland france game had great crowds but uh in gothenburg yesterday was fantastic surprisingly good here in yon shopping where i'm speaking right now a lot of croatian fans coming uh for the game uh against egypt so yeah good atmospheres uh fairly interesting games and uh not always the best handball but it's entertaining and that's that's international handball that's world championship handball for you and have you enjoyed it, Alex? Or what's your, been your 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 small takeaways so far? I think in uh, to, in addition to what you've said, Chris, there's also not been any runaway teams uh, in in the good level. You know, there hasn't been a team that has just shown up and you're thinking, okay, this is shit hot. Um, so it kind of opens up the competition really nicely. I think it's still early rounds and people are a little bit tentative. But, you know, we got to see that Iceland-Portugal game from the start. And that was, you know, that was it. That was the tournament straight away. So, as you said at the top of the hour, Chris, there is one big headline from today, Friday, the 13th of January. And that will be the USA getting their first ever victory at a world championship. And now I didn't see it, as you said. But I would imagine, if I had to hazard a guess, that this was absolutely nuts and chaotic if, if to get a result like that against Morocco we said it as well in the preview that this is their their cup final really isn't it the game against Morocco if they're going to beat anyone in the group they'll, they'll, they'll have a chance against Morocco so tell us what happened the great thing about this game is that everything it had literally everything from the good to the bad and the ugly at times you can almost disregard the first half it was just like a preamble 